Hi friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and if this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy. Today's video is going to be the 16 books in series I DNF'd in 2023. In reality, they are way more than 16, but I only count a book as I currently reading when I'm past the 50 page mark and I only add it to my Goodreads once I've gotten to the 100 page mark. So that kind of narrowed down the field there because I'll pick up a book, read a chapter or two and like, mm, not in the mood or Mm, I don't like it and just be done with it and then with series there are a lot of series where I read the first book and didn't continue on but for this list I decided to use only series where I had read or attempted to read more than one book so buckle in let's get ready to rant First up, we are going to talk about the books, individual books that I read. Um, I'm not going to include the ones that are also in the series. So I'll talk about them once. So the numbers might seem a little bit off, but they're like books that I DNF that were sequels that ultimately led to me DNF in the series. So it'll all make sense in the end. So first up, we have They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This is a thriller that I was reading for the Literally Dead vlog and this was a five star prediction i heard so many great things about the good for her vibes about you know this female serial killer but i was bored and i couldn't care less and there wasn't enough killing going on for me and so much of the story was just like the academia of it all um from the the perspective of the young girl who is a freshman in college and her like queer coming of age and then this female uh, serial killer that we're following and it's more about her duties as a professor and like her qualms with her co-workers and planning out and scoping out these kills versus like actually killing people and when you pitch me a book about a serial killer i'm expecting to follow a serial killer where multiple deaths are being committed throughout the story and maybe that's you know wrong of me to have had the expectation but that's what i was looking for next up we have a river enchanted by rebecca ross this one i dnf really early on uh in the year i think this was like one of the first couple books that i tried to read i got 150 pages into this one and i just really didn't like it uh the thing that bothered me the most from what i can remember is that i, it, I really struggled to have this sense of place and now that i've also read divine rivals i noticed that that maybe is a trend across rebecca ross's writing like it feels like modern day and it feels like scotland but it doesn't confirm or deny that but it gives you all these hints and things that it is but it's not and i don't like that i want it to be one thing or the other um and I really just wasn't invested in the story. This was probably the first instance of me realizing that mystery slash murder mystery driven fantasy are just not really interesting to me. Are not books that I want to read and want to follow along. And while I thought that the writing itself was pretty on like a census level, I wasn't invested in the characters. I didn't care about the plot and I wasn't interested in going along for the ride to find out where these missing girls and missing kids were going and what was the reason behind it like i didn't care but we have a greek myth retelling and that is electra by jennifer saint i read this for the first goodreads vlog that i did this year where i was reading the 2022 um nominees and this book was just so boring it was so painfully boring and it followed these three different characters. We follow Electra, Clytemnestra, and Cassandra. And it was so annoying that a book called Electra over 100 pages in, like at that point, Electra hadn't even been born yet. Like we weren't even following her. I just didn't see the point. Like this was the beginning of my, you know, falling out of love with Greek myth retellings as a, as a subgenre because I often find that they don't do anything with the myth. They don't take any creative license. It's just retelling for the sake of retelling and telling it from this feminist lens but just and and that only being telling it from the female perspective with nothing more than that no more depth no more nuance no more inventiveness with the story and liberties of what that character might have been thinking or doing and feeling and their motivations like it just doesn't do anything with the story and it's like if you don't really have nothing to add 
just telling the same boring tale that I've heard a thousand times from the perspective of the women just it, for me it doesn't do much it doesn't do much and it's really not worth the paper it's printed on next up we have slaying the vampire conqueror by Carissa Broadbent this was the year I discovered well I don't think discovery is the right word because I at the end of last year I might have read thought of no worlds but this is the year I really got into Carissa Broadbent's writing and I started reading the crowns of Nyaxia and I was just head over heels I love a vampire tale and this is a standalone novel that takes place in that world but is a part of the larger um monster lovers shapeshifters whatever series and it takes place on a different like area landmass in this world that the serpent and the wing of the night takes place on and so i really had high hopes i thought that the premise was interesting but i didn't really like our main character we're following this woman who is part of this like religious priest like this this religious order but it's kind of culty and they do like the self-mutilation and it's all these other things to get in touch with this like higher power and she has been tasked with you know slaying the vampire conqueror it's just what it says and i just wasn't invested and at, at the root of the story it is a fantasy romance and i didn't care anything about the characters and their interactions really didn't do anything for me and so i wasn't interested in watching their relationship develop i was just like this is not very good it i know that carissa rotman was you know trying to get ashes and this and all those other things finished in time for her to go on maternity leave and i'm like i, I would have rather you kept it and just gave it to me when it was ready but it felt very half-baked and sure it could have gotten better later on in the story perhaps but it wasn't interesting enough for me to want to find out two wrongs make a right by chloe lees chloe lees is an author that i have really enjoyed in the past uh i started out with her bergman brothers series because one of the specific romances um the love interest has rheumatoid arthritis and that is the correct con condition that i have so reading that rep was really you know impactful for me and i have read other books in that series and i really enjoyed them but this was, I want to say, Chloe Lisa's first traditionally published novel that just went through her publisher rather than like being picked up. And just the vibes were all wrong. They were very different. The main characters in this, this love story, she was too quirky. I do not like quirky women. It, it, it grinds my gears. It really upsets something in my spirit. And these two characters were so unlikable they were people who had these negative interactions with one another and they just kept getting off on the wrong foot and then they somehow got to go on this date but they didn't know that they were the people they were going on this date with they were communicating and they were having fun with it and it's like their siblings set them up uh because their siblings are in a relationship or something like that and it's just i didn't like them more than i didn't like them i actively disliked them and wished bad upon them and i was like you know what let me put this down and i was like maybe chloe lee's the direction that she's going in just isn't for me but then i also recently read a christmas novella of hers that i really liked but that was written before that so i'm just like I don't know it, it, she's not going to be an autobi author she's not like an author i can depend on depending on the synopsis of her books i might give it another shot and i might probably wait for some reviews to come in but uh since then i've seen a lot of people have similar feelings to me about two wrongs make a right so i'm not completely alone in my feelings witch king by martha wells i had read like four martha wells novellas in the murder bot series prior to this and but prior to reading this i would have said i really enjoyed her writing and her storytelling and her character work with murderbot but with witch king what was even going on what was even going on i only got about 60 to 70 pages into this one and i just did not have a firm grasp on what was happening and it's not that i didn't know what was happening and i couldn't follow along but it really felt like there were all these pieces in the air and I was just getting these glimpses of these pieces, but I really didn't see how they worked together. It read like I was reading the second book in a series and there was so much that had happened and so much essential information that was shared in the first book that I just wasn't privy to because I came into the book mid-series. But this is a standalone. And so I, I don't know. And from further research and looking into Martha Wells' other works, people are saying that this is more indicative of how she writes fantasy. Her sci-fi is m much more, you know, straightforward and easier to follow. And, you know, if you like Martha Wells, like that, that tracks. But her fantasy writing is so different. And it, I guess if this is the case, it doesn't surprise me that she really broke out when she 
started writing that murder bot series because it's so much more approachable and in addition to the story being so complex and almost disconnected it was not interesting like there are so many elements that could be interesting but the way they were written about were not engaging and the magic system and all that like I didn't care like we're opening up the novel with a character who is a, someone is attempting to kind of kill him and steal his power and but there is no work done to invest me in Kai Kayana I don't really care about him as a person and also you haven't done anything to make me hate him or to vilify him so it's just I'm very neutral on him so when he's going on this quest and when he's finding out people that he's loved have died and things like that like I, I don't feel any sort of connection to him and of course connection comes over the course of a story but you're front loading with all these things that if I cared would be more impactful but I don't and because you haven't really done anything to make me care I'm probably not gonna so that all combined together which came was enough. Last but not least, on um, the books that I DNF that weren't a part of a larger series that I DNF, we have Masters of Death by Olive e. Blake. This is a case where it was just boring. I was boring and the writing in this one was so pretentious. It was like Olive e. Blake was trying a challenge of how many words can I use in one sentence challenge? How many different synonyms of different words can I use in one sentence challenge? And that was an enjoyable reading experience to me. It was very much saying a lot and saying nothing at the same time like using a lot of words to say nothing and i wasn't interested and this is on the heels of me having read one for my enemy which i loved had so much fun with it was compulsively readable and then i went to this and i'm like i don't like this whatever i don't know what's happening here but i don't like it uh and it just I couldn't force myself to read it. I would pick it up and I would read a page or two and I would put it down. And I'm like, the premise is really interesting, but even the premise itself, just reading the synopsis is all over the place. I'm like, I don't see how these things are connected and I don't know that they should be. So Masters of Death was a no for me. Ollie Blake is definitely an author where I have more misses than hits, but the hits really Let's talk about the series that I DNF. Now, most of these or all but two, I actually have read either the entirety of what I attempted to read or read at least one installment in this series in 2023. But two of them, I did not read installments in 2023, but I decided to DNF the series in 2023. So that's why they're included. So we're going to get those two out of the way. Uh, first up, we have The Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I read the first two books in 2022, and I was just waiting to read the third, and time just kept going by. And because it's not a direct sequel, and each book follows different characters, and there's time jumps between the books, it already felt disconnected from the story, and I already wasn't that interested and that engaged to begin with. So feeling disconnected, not being very engaged with the story, and the third and final book being twice the size of the previous two installments is just like a risk before disaster and it's also come to my uh, a conclusion i've come to the conclusion that perhaps nk jemison is like a one-hit author for me where she only really had the fifth season as something that i enjoyed because i haven't enjoyed any of her other words i haven't given her higher than a three star in from the dream blood duology the city we became inheritance trilogy and i didn't like or have any fond memories of any of those so i'm just like maybe the fifth season was a fluke i mean it's a crazy fluke to have but you know, I, I could say, oh, I don't like her backlist, but The City We Became in that duology is her most recent work, and I didn't like it. But I would definitely pick up the next series that she comes out with, because maybe this was like the pandemic series, and that's why. And just, it's too modern day, and I don't really like that. But unfortunately, this isn't a series for me. I just don't have the drive to continue on. If it was probably like 300 pages like the other two, I might have read it. But it's too long for me to put in the amount of time and effort that it would require for me to finish that. Actually, there's only one series that I didn't read any installments this year because the other one I only read one book. So moving on to The Five Warrior Angels by Brian Lee Durfee. This is a series that I was starting out this year doing a read along with with Leanna from Leanna's Library. This is a series that I was kind of underrated, but I'd heard great things about from everyone that I heard speak about it. And it was horrible. If you were around in like January, February of last year, and I'll, you know, you could catch up those live shows, but these books were so long and so boring and so bland 
and there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of nothing happening and literally no time going by like I think the first book took place over the course of maybe two weeks if that and we're supposed to have this impact about these things that are people are going to war and armies are being moved and this and that and like none of these things matter and they're they're not real because none of these things could happen in like the timeline that is happening and also like the way that religion and the religious motivations of the story were handled it just was very bland like i think there were a lot of good ideas here but they weren't executed well and it, the series continued to go downhill in book two and these were like the longest well book two is the longest book that i read in 2023 it was 960 pages and it felt like 10,000 pages it felt like i would never be free and it, it just and the the thing that really put the nail in the in the coffin for me was that this is originally supposed to be a five book series but due to the reception it got pulled down to a trilogy so i already know that he's essentially either putting three books worth of plot together in one book or he's scrapped so many storylines that have been the seeds have been laying uh for the past two books and it, there's just gonna be no resolution for it so i'm just like there's no point in me wasting my time with a series i'm not enjoying and the third book didn't have an audiobook so i'm like if you know all the things where it's like okay i'm not that interested but for completionist sake okay whatever then you had the opportunity to do that and it was over a thousand pages and i'm not gonna physically read a thousand page book where all the things that i said already were true Next up, we have the Finley Donovan series by El Casamano. This is a series that has progressively gone downhill. I started out with Finley Donovan, I want to say, back in 2021, and I really enjoyed it. It was such a surprising read. And then Finley Donovan knocks him dead. The second book was kind of disappointing, but I could still see the potential. And then when we get to Finley Donovan Jumps with Gun, I'm just like, what is the point? Why are we three books deep into a mystery series and we're still trying to solve the same mysteries from book one? Like, it's not a mystery of the week or every book has a new mystery to solve it's we are still trying to solve the same things that were introduced in book one and have yet to be resolved and it's like at what point are you going to resolve these things like if there was like one overarching plot that hadn't been resolved but all these other things were and things like that but that wasn't happening and also um Finley just as a character was becoming so almost like a caricature and maybe she always was a caricature but it, I thought it was charming in the first book and as the series continued to go it got to be very grating for me. The relationship between Finley and Vera was one that I really enjoyed in the beginning but it really just didn't make sense by the time we got to the third book. There's this love triangle thing that was happening but kind of was thrown away and then the third book had this really large police presence and police plot line that i'm really not interested in reading and I, it really doesn't make sense for a book in 2023 to really be focused on the police and the militia this much like it just uh-uh and i know some people are like it was originally supposed to be like a four book series three book series and then it kept getting extended and last year it's all it was announced that she got like a three book extension or like a three extra three books in the series and it's just like people are like oh i'm gonna read book four but it's like i every book has gone down downhill and so i feel like that is a, a pattern that's going to continue and i want to continue to be more frustrated by the fact that the answers the questions from book one have yet to be answered we're just adding new questions adding new questions that's not satisfactory as a for me as a reader because i'm not getting any conclusions i'm not getting in the, the mysteries aren't getting solved the goal of the mystery is to get the answer and we're not getting the answer the Atlas series by Olivia Blake. This is one that was so disappointing to me because when I did the original Goodreads video uh, in April, the Atlas the Atlas Six was the book that I enjoyed the most out of the ones that I had not read. So I was really excited to continue on with that series. And like, if you don't know anything about me and Olivia Blake, like I was hip to Olivia Blake way before she even got popular. Um, like I remember I found atlas six and i bought it and then i recommended it to kayla from books and lala and when i sent her the goodreads uh, of it or she like checked out the goodreads at that point it only had 12 reviews 12 reviews like because i like scour the internet for books that i'm interested in and you know i i had the indie version i got in a special edition and i was like this is a book that i'm gonna love everything about it it's just it's just me coded and i read it and while i didn't i really enjoyed it it wasn't like a five star but i really enjoyed it. i was really intrigued and i thought she had something special but the atlas paradox is god awful it took me 16 days to read 200 pages of it and i was struggling it was 
it was so ridiculous it was so ridiculous you have people who live in the same house and they claim that they haven't seen one another in six months the beginning starts out with this this event that happens with the whole crew and we have to watch the same event happen over and over and over again from each person's pov um like the found family and like the interesting per interpersonal dynamics between the aspirants of the alexandria society or like some of the best parts of book one but because they're not interacting they're not speaking to each other they're not seeing one another like that is completely lost and it just this is the first at least to my knowledge sequel that Olive blake has written and it really seemed like she didn't know what direction she wanted to take and the writing was even more convoluted it was really like t talking this way into a square into a circle into a rhombus and just talking itself in circles and i'm just like are you trying to confuse me are you trying to tell me a story like what's the point here and since uh, since I finished that, obviously, in the last couple of days, the Atlas Complex has come out and the reviews have been really bad from what I've seen. And I'm just like, I'm glad I got out uh, ahead, but it's really disappointing because that was a series I just really thought I was going to love. Uh, going to a romance series, we have The Kings of Sin by Anna Huang. I read the first two books, King of Pride, King of wrath and king of pride king of pride was the 2023 release and either at the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024 king of sin came out and i was just like this is just not doing anything for me the writing just feels so uninspired like i read the third and fourth book in the twisted series and then i read the first two books in this series and the twisted series book three with jules and josh is the one that had the most sparks it had like there was actual chemistry between the characters and i know anna huang is popping these books out really quickly and i question how much actual relationship development and just character work and just really how much polish you can put on the story when you're putting out three to four books a year or just even two to three books a year um it's just they weren't really great and some of them were long for no reason and things just happened just to happen it didn't really feel like these were like puzzle piece people they just meant to be together the motivations for the characters and the romance like one was a second chance and one was like we're you know on opposite sides it's kind of forbidden and i never really felt it i never really believed it uh and i want to feel what the characters are feeling i want to be kicking my feet and screaming and crying and throwing up and i want to be pining for them to get together and like the angst and the tension and there really isn't much of that in her writing it's just very bland and very blah it's very uninspired it's really the only thing that i can say and so i think for me anna hong is just an author i don't vibe with and i don't plan on reading any more from her down to the last two next up we have the wayfarer series by becky chambers another read alone that i was hosting on my channel in my now defunct book club uh, i read the first two books in this series a long way to a small angry planet and a close and common orbit and i just couldn't bring myself to read books three and four this is a cozy sci-fi series but with stories like this they really hinge on you feeling this sort of connection with the characters and um really being invested in like the themes that are being explored and i didn't feel that with this i tend to like my i, I can get down with cozy fantasy but with sci-fi for me i really want it epic i really want it interesting i really want it complex and intricate and detailed and preferably violent uh that's what i like in my sci-fi and this wasn't that um and this of the becky chambers that i read i'm just like she isn't an author for me because i've read three novellas from her and two novels and none of it has really been stand out for me and it's just like I don't like her approach uh it's very like soft and it has this ensemble cast and while some of the characters were interesting overall I just wasn't compelled by the story and were it not for the read-along I probably would not have completed both of the books I definitely I probably would have completed book one but I definitely wouldn't have completed book two but I wanted to give it a second opportunity since I didn't own it to see if it would improve and it really didn't um and I find that similarly to the inheritance trilogy i struggle to continue on with series where they're not direct sequels where they are campaigns to one another that follow different characters and things like that like it makes it difficult to get started because for me the slowest part of a book is the first 100 pages the slowest book that i'm going to read in the series is the first book and so when you're constantly having a new pov a new timeline a new setting whatever it makes it i don't get that satisfaction that i get with a series where i'm just like sinking into the world and diving deep i'm constantly starting over and when i'm already lacking intrigue and lacking connection 
being like constantly having to start over with a new person or a new POV or a new storyline or whatever it's just not that interesting to me and then last but not least this is the one that hurts the most probably out of all of these and this is the roots of chaos by samantha shannon i finally finished prior to the orange tree this year for the dragon vlog and then for the good race 2023 vlog i was reading a day of fallen night i got 350 pages into a day of fallen night and i just couldn't take it anymore i just didn't care i didn't care about the characters i was bored throughout the story i just felt like nothing was happening and this book has such a beautiful cover it has such an interesting premise the world building is so interesting but i think what it comes down to is i don't like samantha shannon's writing i also read the first book in the bone season and that one isn't on this list because i kind of want to give that one a second shot so i haven't officially dnf'd it but i do think that i'm just not a fan of samantha shannon's writing i think she wastes a lot of time in her stories and she re never really gets to the point and the interesting things the exciting things are things that she like glosses over and doesn't spend a lot of time on but these like slow moments with characters that i don't care about are where her focus lie and if i cared about them i would probably feel differently but i don't so i don't and unfortunately i just had to put it down like i could suffer through the rest of this book kind of like i did with priory and I'm like this would be max three stars and being 350 pages into a book and still having 500 pages left and being bored and being uninterested and not caring and not wanting to pick it up it's just like if i had 50 to 100 pages left okay maybe but 500 more pages of the book to go to go nowhere because ultimately with a prequel nothing that is going to happen in here is going to surprise me because i already know where things ended in the history because it's what i've read in priory so you can't do anything that changes the timeline or changes the overall order of things that have happened you're just kind of telling me how we got there and so since there's to me no prize at the end of the rainbow there's no intrigue there's no sense of what could happen because i already know the outcomes are, that are what are going to happen it's just like well, what am i reading for so yeah these have been the 16 books and series that i have dnf so in the early list it was uh a day of fallen night and um the Alice Paradox were books that I DNF'd. So yeah, uh, if you made it to the end of this video, let's leave a thumbs down emoji for all these books that did not meet expectation. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you in my next one. I hope you enjoy. Bye.